everyone, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this lotion recipe. Now, believe it or not, making lotions is easier than you might think. It's a matter of combining water, oils, and emulsifying wax and your choice of waxes to create a really beautiful, luxurious, moisturizing product for your skin. Now, this is a fairly thick, lo thick lotion, and how your lotion ends up being is going to depend on whatever oils, whatever water, how much emulsifying wax you use. If you're interested in learning more about how to formulate your own lotions, we have a great blog post on that. You can make these thicker, thinner, you can make them more luxurious, you can make them more oily, less oily. Your heart's content once you learn some basic science around how to formulate your own lotions. A little bit more about this particular lotion recipe. So the main ingredient in this recipe is actually the squalene oil. And squalene oil is all the rage in facial oils right now. It's very lightweight, it's very moisturizing, and fun fact about it, your body naturally produces squalene oil, but as we age, it decreases production. And so that's one of the reasons why it's so good in lotion recipes and facial oil recipes, because it is very close to kind of the lipid profile of your skin and your sebum. And so it absorbs in quickly while giving beautiful nourishment and beautiful coverage. If you're looking at high-end facial oils, uh, this oil can be super pricey. I've seen it up to $50 for an ounce of pure squalene oil. So the recipe you're making today is fantastic. This recipe also uses agave extract and aloe ten x And agave extract is fantastic at adding moisture for your skin, not to be confused with agave syrup, which is commonly used in food items to sweeten it. The aloe ten x is a very, very, very concentrated form of aloe, and it can be used straight in your recipes, or you could add, you can dilute it with full nine to one with water. In this case, we're adding it to a recipe that has a lot of water, so we're essentially diluting it. Aloe is known to be very soothing to your skin. The fragrance I chose for this recipe is so good. It's part of the Brambleberry Botanical Garden Collection, Emerald Agave. It's such a unique, fresh scent. There's some notes of sea in it, but of course there's notes of agave in it. Coconut bark, acai. It smells so green and so fresh. There's teak wood in it to kind of bring out that base notes. It's fantastic. I can't wait to hear what you guys think of it. So when prepping for your lotion making, it's important to disinfect all the equipment you're using with a 5% bleach water solution because mold and bacteria can grow in anything that has water and lotion has a lot of water. When you're making lotions, you always wanna make sure you're in a clean kitchen environment as well. So that means disinfecting your countertops, wearing gloves, apron, and any sort of additional precautions you wanna take. When you're making lotion, it's important to do the water phase together and then the oils and waxes also go together. So now I'm adding my aloe 10x because that's water soluble. Then I'll heat all of this up. Now that my water is warm, it is time to add all of my oils and waxes. My water is about 160 degrees. Next is my avocado oil. And avocado oil is one of my favorites to use in skincare. It's really lightweight, it absorbs in easily and quickly, and also has a really great fatty acid profile for the mantle of your skin. These are my emulsifying waxes. I'm using Polo Wax and BTMS 50. And this is really what's gonna bind together my oil and my water. And the reason I'm using a combination is because I find the BTMS 50 to be very conditioning, very silky, very smooth, and the Polo Wax really has a fantastic bond. So it helps to keep the oils and water together extremely well. So the combination produces, well, quite frankly, miraculous results for a lotion. So this mixture has to get to about 180 to get it to melt. I like to do it on 30 to 60 second bursts so we don't have any boiling waxes. So keep that in mind, shorter bursts than the microwave. So this is about 184, it's about 160. You don't want your water to get below about 160 because if the temperature differential is too high, what ends up happening is this will literally solidify when it hits the water, which is no good. So now I'm just gonna add my oil and emulsifying wax mixture to my water and stick blend while I am doing that. This temperature drops really quickly. We're already at 133. So now it's time to add our extract and our preservative. And if this is the time you add any color that you might want to add, make sure if you're adding color that it's a water soluble colorant. So now I'm adding the agave extract. And then next I'll add my preservative. I'm using Optifen because it's formaldehyde free and also paraben free. 
added my preservative at the end because it is something that is heat sensitive. And if you're wondering, well, why do I even need a preservative? There is a blog post that I'll put in the links below that goes over all things preservative, why you need one, what kinds there are, and how to use them. And finally, save the best for last, fragrance. And again, it's totally optional, but color. And so in terms of the fragrance, it's totally personal preference on how much you use. If you use a lot though, you're gonna end up more with a perfume as opposed to a very beautiful, subtle scent. So that's something to keep in mind when you're figuring out how much fragrance you want to use. For the colorant, I'm using Emerald Lab Color from Brambleberry. This is fully diluted and it is a water soluble colorant. And you don't wanna use anything that is gonna to be too strong on your skin. Like you don't want anything to dye it. Really, this is just enough. I'm using about three milliliters total. And this is just enough to give it a very light color as opposed to something that's going to turn your skin actually green. Just gonna give this a quick stick blend. And since this thickens up pretty quickly, I'm gonna wanna put this in my containers right now while it's still pourable. So you can use a funnel, or I'm gonna try and see if my biceps will hold this long enough to pour all of it. We shall see. And now I like to leave a little bit of head space because you're gonna to have to put this entire thing in. And I also don't ever cap these until they're uh, room temperature because any of that excess steam that's evaporating out could collect on the top and give your preservative a hurdle that it cannot overcome. So I leave these uncapped just in, for a few hours until we hit room temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and continue filling all these up. And you guys, make sure when you are making your products, I want to see them hashtagged on Instagram and Twitter and on social with the hashtag BrambleOn because we love to see what you create and what our community is doing with all of our ingredients. Until next time, you guys. I'm super annoying whenever I'm doing wine tastings or anything like that, because literally I'll be like, my nose in the glass will be like, I smell blah, 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 blah. And everybody will be like, I smell nothing. Yeah. And then I'll be like, guys, one of the best noses in Walker County. <laughs>